It's been a long time since I've made a Q&A video and the channel has been growing a lot lately so I thought now would be a good time to answer some of your questions. I posted a community tab post as well as a little Instagram story sticker thing on my Instagram account. So today I'm going to try to read through and respond to as many of those as I can. Okay so I'm going to try to answer a lot of the repeated questions. This one I get a lot is like tips for improvisation or do you have any tips for me or I'm new to saxophone what advice do you have? This is a really hard question for me to answer because it's so broad so I kind of just give a broad response but tips for improvising definitely transcribe whether it's solos of people on your instrument that you really like or just songs in general like learning songs by ear that's definitely helpful all that stuff gets into your subconscious and eventually you can kind of just play without really thinking and that's the long-term goal anyways in terms of like general tips if you're new to playing your instrument I would say come up with a practice routine uh, that you do consistently every day and in that practice routine include lots and lots and lots of sound exercises I always say it's better to practice like 20 minutes every day than like two hours once a week and that brings me to the next question that's asked a lot in here how did you get your tone or how do I improve my sound or what sound exercises did you do so I've definitely spent a ton of time doing sound exercises and it's kind of like a meditation for me in a lot of ways I'm trying to make sure I always do them every single day and I just feel better about my life but in terms of what exercises I do specifically I have a whole bunch of video lessons on Skillshare so that's linked in the description if you want to check that out those are all the exercises that I've been doing for years how do you start getting gigs and playing jobs and do you think I can start at 15 by the time you're watching this uh, I will have posted a video about how to start gigging so go check that out that should be really helpful will you play Jazzy T Swift songs, please, please, please. <laughs> Best advice for young jazz musicians, transcribe. What are all the instruments you play and how long have you been playing each one? I'm mostly just a saxophone player. <laughs> saxophone is the instrument I put the most amount of time into and I've been playing that for about 10 years, but I started on like piano, I think when I was really young and then I picked up guitar. <laughs> played that for a while and took lessons and then I picked up saxophone and then I picked up flute a little bit in high school and clarinet for a minute but I still practice flute every day like I just do 15 to 20 minutes of sound exercises but I'm not really trying to become a great flute player so I'd rather spend my time you know playing saxophone or making videos what did you major in in college is majoring in something with music worth it I get this question a lot um, I did start studying jazz studies was what my degree would have been I did one semester of that and that was enough school for me I don't really want to give people advice on if they should or shouldn't major in music there's so many different factors and school isn't for everyone in general and music school isn't for everyone and dropping out isn't for everyone either you kind of just have to figure out what's gonna work for you you know I got to school when I was really miserable I was so unhappy and I know I would be a more technically proficient player if I had stayed in school but I was so unhappy that I think I probably would have not continue pursuing music if I even survived school. What got you into music? As a young child, I was always very like attracted to sound, I guess. I always felt like sound resonated with me, whether it was music or just like, just sounds in general. And I don't know, hearing rhythm in things, I don't know. My dad definitely got me into music too. He played trumpet in high school and my mom played flute in high school. Neither of them pursued music professionally. But my dad always played like Earth, Wind & Fire and like just really good music that felt good and he introduced me to jazz early on and that was definitely a part of it have you ever found it hard to get motivated to practice something very difficult yes all the time i think there's a book that bob reynolds talks about i think it's called the the war of art and something that he talks about is the resistance that's definitely a real thing uh but i always just tell people like you won't always be motivated so you must learn to be disciplined there was actually a moment i remember i was in high school and a saxophone player joe scheller who's been in some of my videos and now i play with a good bit he came and he was performing with i think a saxophone quartet and something he said that's always stuck with me was it's about pulling your horn out of the case when you don't want to and i think that's really true if you really want to get good at something and improve you kind of just have to do the things that people don't want to do and be disciplined there's not really any way around that so yeah it sucks you're not going to be motivated and difficult stuff is hard and i definitely struggle with that all the time but just do little chunks at a time and you know work on stuff consistently and long term you'll improve what is your favorite gig you've ever done okay there was one that i played last summer where it was a corporate event for a company that's based in pittsburgh and they actually flew out carly ray jepson to sing for this like corporate party and i got to play with a band that kind of opened for her that was super fun and i did not gig vlog it i should have it would have made such a good video but I wanted to be 100% focused on the music and I knew the musicians that were on the band and they were all very serious musicians and working in the scene a lot. And I just didn't want any distractions. That was a super fun gig. Maybe I'll make like a story time about that or something. Is it worth it to pursue music full time? This is another one of those questions that I can't really tell you what to do. Like, I don't know. There's so many factors. I will say you definitely really have to love it. Who are the top three worst music content creators? <laughs> Dave Pollock is definitely not one of them. I'll at least say that. I watched your progression video and it seemed like you learned a lot from Eric, who's also one of my teachers right now. What did you learn most from him? Plus bad, <laughs> plus best dad joke he ever told you in rehearsal. <laughs> okay, there are two main things that I would say I learned from him. 
One is like sound. Something he drilled into me early on was like, tell yourself you love sound exercises even if you don't and eventually you will. I found that to be very true and now I like obsess over my sound and I really like playing sound exercises and working on it. Another thing that he taught me kind of indirectly was just like about the grind of being a working musician. He taught part-time at my high school so he was there a couple days a week and he would always like come in, you know, maybe he'd be a couple minutes late, he has his horn over his shoulder, you know, he's like chugging coffee, he's like I've been up since 5.30, I had to take my dumb dog out, I played till 1am last night downtown I was blah, you know and then he's like I gotta run from this to go teach part-time at another school and then after that I'm playing a gig and then we'd be like in lessons and he's like responding to emails taking phone calls and while he's doing all of that he's like oh that's a G sharp I'm like trying to read through my A tune and I'm like oh he, he didn't hear that and he was just like oh uh, that's G sharp. He's like, you know, on the phone responding to emails. And then he also like, oh, uh, you missed that. <laughs> that was definitely super beneficial for me to like kind of see like what the grind and the hustle is really about as a real working musician. I mean, he always said like, I play over 300 gigs a year. He just like is a working musician to the core, like in every sense of the word. So a lot of the stuff I learned was just from like watching him and also like seeing how he interacted with people and just all of that stuff was like really important for me. Best dad joke. The one I remember all the time was my grandfather was a magician. Every time he walked down the street he turned into a bar boing <laughs> He would always make that spring noise after every joke. I used to walk around school trying to imitate it for years. I think I've gotten it down pretty well. I haven't practiced it in a while. <laughs> Is there a reason I would be having trouble with getting out normal notes on my sax? You probably have a leak or something. If you're having troubles with your horn, I would just take it to a repair person. They should be able to look at it and diagnose your problem for free and then give you an estimate on how much it might cost to fix it. Music theory versus ears. As much of both as you can get is ideal. They both help each other. Like having a good understanding of theory is going to help your ears when you're hearing stuff. But I know plenty of people with terrible ears that are great theorists and i know plenty of people that know no theory that can play anything by ear like that so how often do you practice i practice pretty much six days a week i try to give myself one day a week off of the horn just to give like my face muscles a break how many hours do you practice in a week so like i said i practice like six days a week and i tend to do like 15 to 20 minutes of just flute sound exercises and then roughly an hour and a half to two hours of saxophone sometimes a little more sometimes a little less and then sometimes on top of that all gigs but i don't really consider gigs practice in the traditional sense so i don't know what the math is on that but it's a couple hours a day usually what motivates you to play if you're not in the mood and the thing that motivates me the most is just like wanting to have bigger and better opportunities as a saxophonist and also feeling like some sense of responsibility as like my online presence grows i feel like a responsibility to like continue growing as a saxophonist because i don't want to be one of those content creators who you look at and you're like oh they're just a content creator they're not really a saxophonist or they're a content creator first that's something i'm still trying to work out but definitely like i'm definitely motivated by that and also just like motivated to like play with the best musicians i can play with and like when i'm playing with musicians better than me i feel motivated to make sure i'm pulling my weight that's a good thing i think more important read or mouthpiece i was actually thinking about this i wanted to make like one of those like tier lists things of like saxophone gear and like at the top it would be like mouthpiece and reed would be on the same line like if you have a terrible mouthpiece and you put a great reed on it it's still not going to play and if you have a great mouthpiece and you put a terrible reed on it it's still not going to play actually no the top would be like player and then mouthpiece reed and then like saxophone and then maybe like neck and then like ligature and then neck strap or something like that <laughs> what fairling etude is good for just a relaxed day i don't know i've never really played those i think i played them a little bit in high school and college which is probably why my technique isn't great how do you get in tune intonation is something i've really struggled with and i just like play with drones a lot that definitely helps how do i tell a story in my improv this might sound like a cheesy answer but live your life like you gotta have experiences to tell about does that make sense play stars and stripes forever on flute and piccolo i can't do you listen to modern artists or more classics like Coltrane or Parker Moore? Right now, I kind of just listen to whatever sounds good, <laughs> which is entirely subjective. But I listen to a lot of Eddie Barbash, like saxophone people. He's like the guy I listen to the most of probably right now. But I've definitely spent time like listening to and transcribing like Cannibal Adderley, Sonny Stitt, all of those greats. That's important too. What's the best way to grow a following on social media these days in your opinion? Short form content probably has the best organic reach right now. What's the dream? Have you ever had a dream like? That you, um, you had. Opinion on brass? Brass instruments are hard to play. Are you goaded at Fortnite? Yeah, check out my highlight reel. Sam, get me! Rest me! Bruh. What are your thoughts on musicians who actually dislike playing live? So Tabor DM'd me and explained what he meant by this. And he basically just said like, he's gigged a bunch and he was like, he would always leave gigs just feeling like, oh, this sucked. Like I drove so far, I made no money. And like, I just didn't really enjoy the actual process of playing live. Honestly, that's something I've spent a lot of time thinking about. Like. 
I don't necessarily love the working musician lifestyle of like being out late and playing and you know going from one gig to the next. I think some of that has to do with like I'm more introverted so like those types of environments tend to like suck energy out of me whereas like for extroverted people that type of experience like gives them energy. So maybe it's something like that. You definitely learn a lot by playing live and with other musicians and there are a lot of things you just can't get any other way. So it, that's a balance I'm trying to figure out but I think if you play music because you love it you should just do whatever makes you happy you know like if playing live makes you not enjoy playing music then you shouldn't do that best pickup line i don't know i need to shed my pickup line <laughs> Do you do any specific exercises for Altissimo? A lot of overtone matching stuff, which is in that Skillshare class. Best reads, definitely Boston Sack Shop. I've been playing them exclusively for a long time now. You can use code FRANK for 10% off your order. I'll have that linked in the description too. Favorite flavor of toothpaste? Yo, I get the cheapest toothpaste I can find. Toothpaste is insane. There's like a million different kinds and a million different flavors and some of them foam and I'm like brushing my teeth and I feel like spit constantly because there's so much foam. I could go on a rant about toothpaste. I don't really have a flavor. Whatever is cheapest. Did you start on clarinet or saxophone first? Definitely saxophone. <laughs> I know a lot of people start on clarinet, but a lot of times that's because they have band teachers that force them to start on clarinet, which is probably beneficial, but I just hate, always hated the clarinet. I don't know. Top three favorite saxophonists. This is easy. In no particular order, Eddie Barbash, Sam Greenfield, Patrick Bartley. I should say living saxophonists, but even like non-living saxophonists, those cats are all on that list. What is your favorite thing about the saxophone? I think saxophone can be super expressive. There's some things you can't do, like on a piano, you can't bend notes, for example. Obviously there are more than one way to be expressive through any you know instrument that you're playing, but that's definitely one thing. Do you play by ear? Yes. What sax do you love playing the most? Definitely alto. I'm an alto player at heart. Lately, I've been getting called for more tenor gigs, like especially in a horn section, that's more common, but I really am an alto player at heart. I've put the most time in on alto and I don't know, I just feel most connected to the E flat instrument, I guess like orally. Saxophonist you've been really digging lately? Eddie Barbash, that's obvious, I already talked about that. Any reason you chose the mouthpiece and sax combo you play now? Um, I chose the Eastman cause I got a good deal on it and I could upgrade from my student horn without spending like nine grand on a Mark VI. And then I've been playing the Sios for a long time. They like sent it to me and I could work out what I like and what I didn't like. And then I've just been recently experimenting with the Boston Sax Shop M series. I'm kind of just like play whatever I get my hands on and if I like it, I'll play it. If I don't like it, I won't. Have you ever had people that try to steer you away from music? Yeah, I mean, luckily my parents and family have always been pretty supportive, which I'm really grateful for. But I've definitely had certain friends that weren't always as supportive. Can you play Careless Whisper? No, I don't know that tune. Is there any best mouthpiece you would recommend? I always think gear questions are so funny because it's like, it's entirely subjective. I think the best thing you can do is like, when you're young, just pick one mouthpiece, doesn't even matter what it is really, like a, just a standard Meyer or something, and just play that for like years and just like work on that. And then like once you get further into it, you know, just start playing with other mouthpieces here and there and like try to experiment and figure out what works best for you. We all have different anatomies and everyone has a different preference. So all of those kind of play a role in what you're going to like and what you're not going to like. How much money do you get off of gigs and is it enough to live? I want to do this after high school. I have a lot of working musician friends that all they do is play gigs. I have a lot of working musician friends that play gigs and teach. It kind of depends on what you want to do. I play some gigs and then I also make content, which is kind of another way to, for me to have, you know, a second stream of income without having to rely on just hustling for gigs all the time. I think if you really love something, you'll find a way, you know, the money will come. Have you studied music theory at university and institute after high school? And if so, where? Actually, most of my theory knowledge and oral training comes from high school. I was really lucky to go to a great high school that had like a really good music program. And so I think I took like two or three years of like oral training and theory. So that was definitely helpful. Is it possible for a saxophone career to be only classical music or have to have a mix of both. There's basically like one classical saxophonist gig where you're playing and that's like some dude in France already has that. Saxophone is just a newer instrument and so there's just way less classical repertoire for it. But I know a lot of great classical saxophonists that have kind of studied that side of the horn and then go on to teach. So that's definitely something you could do. Okay, rapid fire questions from Ash. Here we go. When can we start Tour de Frank? <laughs> I don't think I'm big enough to do a tour yet, but I would love to tour with some musical act at some point. Can we unmod Zan in the Discord? Insert shameless Discord plug here. <laughs> I do have a Discord server. You can join. I have a link in the description. I do game night like once a month. I'm not super active on Discord, but I try to at least check it every day. So that's a good place to hang out and meet other people in my community. Why do you like burning trees down in Minecraft? For legal reasons, I can't answer that. What do you think is the toughest thing about learning an instrument? Definitely just like sticking with it. There's so many days where you're like, oh, I don't want to play this thing. And you kind of have to figure out, do you not want to play it today more than you do want to play it in the future? What is your favorite double reed instrument? I've never played any double reed instruments, so I don't really know to play, to listen to. Oboe's cool, I guess that's like one of three double reed instruments. Can you play the lick on all of your instruments right now? No, I can't. <laughs> today, is my, today is my day off. 
Do you experience imposter syndrome? If so, what do you do about it? Yeah, definitely. And like, it's getting more and more of a thing. Like I've started to have people come up to me at gigs and be like, oh my gosh, I've seen your videos. I'm definitely still trying to work out like how to deal with it, but I try to just, you know, focus on making fun videos that I like to make and playing music that I like to play. And I try not to like overthink it too much. How do you deal with burnout as a musician or in general? I am terrible at dealing with burnout. <laughs> there have been plenty of times in my life where I felt burnt out for months on end and I just keep pushing and keep going through it. Um, and usually I come out the other side and then I, you know, I feel good again, but I don't necessarily think that's the healthiest way to deal with it or that it's the most sustainable. I know a lot of people say just like do something else. I think that's probably good advice. And some of that for me is like playing gigs versus like making content. Like if I play too many gigs, I start to wish I was making more content. And so I start making more content. And if I'm making too much content, not playing enough gigs, I start to play more gigs. So that kind of helps having, it's kind of like two separate things. What should I be doing the most to improve if you say long tones? Definitely sound exercises, not necessarily long tones. I like to do overtone matching. What school did you go to and specifically major in? Any tips for better subtones for low B flat on tenor? Also, I love the content. Keep it up. Yo, thank you so much for watching. So I started going to UNT and I was majoring in jazz studies. In terms of subtoning, I don't know. I kind of suck at subtoning. There are probably a lot of videos from people way more qualified than me. So maybe check those out. What was your catalyst moment that pushed you that extra bit? I'm not really sure I understand this question. I definitely had a very meaningful musical moment when I was at the Berkeley five week summer program. I talk about that in my zero to 10 years saxophone video. So I'll link that in the description too. Who's your favorite jazz composer? I don't know, maybe Irving Berlin. Do you play any other instruments? If yes, what is the most difficult one you've played and what is your favorite piece to play? I mostly am a saxophone player, uh, but clarinet's probably the hardest instrument I've ever tried to play. I don't really know if I have a favorite piece. It changes constantly. A beginner to advanced guide or tips video for sax transcription would be amazing. I have a little bit of a video about like how to learn stuff by ear and that's kind of the process of transcribing. Did you play in high school? Yes, so I started my freshman year, no, the end of my eighth grade year and then going into ninth grade is like when I started playing the saxophone. What kind of musician do you like the most based on the instrument that they play? I'm not sure if I understand this question entirely, but like my favorite saxophonist right now is Eddie Barbash for sure. But he's kind of a weird mix of like playing a genre that's not typically played on saxophone on the saxophone. So what would you tell your past self when you started practicing saxophone? Okay, I would tell myself when you're practicing scales, don't practice them because you're trying to learn the scale itself. Learn the scale, but then practice the scale to try to like work out your technique, not just your fingers close to the keys, but like evenness between the notes, almost like acting like a machine in the sense of like playing everything super even and in time. That's something I'm working on right now because I don't have that together in my playing. And I'm like, oh, if I would have spent all this time years ago doing it, like I practice scales a lot, but I wasn't thinking in that sense of like practicing it to for evenness and all of that stuff. What inspired you to start playing the saxophone? I think I've told this story before, but I was a guitar player in eighth grade and I had this mixed ensemble and the teacher that ran it was a saxophone player, Eric DeFade. And he came in one day and played a saxophone and I was like, I have to do that. He always claims that he saved me from the guitar studio. <laughs> He goes, uh, you seem like a pretty bright kid. What do you think about the saxophone? That's, that's, that's what, how he described it a couple months ago at this gig. Do you play other genres than jazz often? Yeah, I actually wouldn't even consider myself a jazz musician. Like, I'm not really studying jazz right now in the sense of like, I'm not learning new tunes. I'm not really transcribing much. I'm really learning a lot of bluegrass tunes and transcribing bluegrass solos. That's kind of what I'm into right now. So I'm just trying to kind of go deep on that right now. How did you learn theory and how do you personally apply it when you play? So yeah, like I said, I learned it mostly in high school. I guess I don't really consciously apply it. I probably did like early on, but it's definitely not something I'm like thinking about all the time. The biggest thing was like training my ears, especially in like the context of like a theory class. That was something for sure. How often do you gig? Not that often. Like I'm not like the busiest musician in town. I think last month I had like nine gigs, which is not nothing, but I know plenty of musicians that were working more than me, but it also fluctuates on the time of year. And I'm kind of starting to get called for more and more things. Have you played any other instruments besides saxophone? More specifically, have you played something outside of the woodwind instrument family? Yeah. So guitar and banjo a little bit. I don't play banjo much anymore but there was a time where i played banjo a lot what got you into jazz slash band in the first place a family member or something like that when i was really young my dad definitely got me into jazz some and then i had some guitar teachers that got me into it and then of course eric got me into saxophone what is the most soul crushing thing someone has requested that was deemed jazz <laughs> I don't know if I have something that someone's requested, but it's always funny whenever I'm playing like a rap song and people are like, oh, that's jazzy just because I'm playing it on a saxophone. <laughs> all right, I think I got through pretty much all of the questions. I'm not sure if I included all of them or not because I'm looking at my camera and it says I've been filming for 38 minutes. I don't want this video to be 40 minutes, so hopefully I've found a way to shorten it a little bit while still including as many of the questions as I can. Thanks so much for all of the questions. And also I just looked, we just hit 33,000 subs, which is crazy. So thank you so much for that. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for watching my videos. I'm so grateful to be in this position and to have people that like to watch the random stuff I put on the internet. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I really do appreciate it. I don't take it for granted. And I'm grateful that I kind of get to interact with some of you.
you in as many ways as I can. If you made it this far, <laughs> here's a tune on my Tony Dixon tin whistle in A, which I've ne which I've never posted a video on before. But I got it a couple months ago. <laughs> <laughs>